This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote, and today's quote is, information technology and business are becoming inextricably interwoven. I don't think anybody can talk meaningfully about one without talking about the other. And that is from Bill Gates. With us today in the studio, we have someone who helps businesses use the always changing information technology to stay on top of it, on top of the trends, and remain efficient. Her name is Kim DePesa. Mm -hmm. Hello, Kim. Vazil, good afternoon. You got to be louder than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Vazil, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how yeah. are you? I'm good, good. Thanks for having me on the show. My pleasure. Tell us about your business. What do you do in your business? Oh, well, currently our business is involved in information and technology, and mm -hmm. your quote was very appropriate. Okay. It is definitely information and technology and understanding how you embed that as a cross-cutting concern mm -hmm. around all your business operations mm -hmm. and don't put it in a silo as information. Got it. And I have to say too, it's not just information and technology or IT. Use of information to formulate and generate new technologies is also very important for a business owner to understand. How so? What do you mean by that? Um, I think people think about information and technology or IT mm -hmm. without thinking about them as separate entities too that inform how you design your business or how you um, target customers or how you develop new portfolios within your business. Mm -hmm. See, you have to also know that when you get the output from information and technology, how you convert that into something that a business could leverage to continue business. Can you give us an example? Um, well, currently exploring our information and technology, we came to terms with the fact that there are many players in the environment, and if we want to differentiate ourselves as a company playing in this environment, we have to be able to convert the information we get from our clients mm -hmm. into a product or a technology that we could leverage to hit market, to go to market with. Um, so we're currently looking at grants and SBIRs and STTRs in order to get involved in R&D as a small business mm -hmm. so that we can understand what um, gaps there are for our clients um, and, and develop products as well, not just have information. Okay. How do you get to start your company? Uh, my co our company started in 2008. It is a family-owned business. Mm -hmm. uh, my husband started off as a software developer, mm -hmm. um, coming from the islands with his master's in information technology, okay. and working for the government for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and coming to terms with the fact that he realized that to him, uh, because technology was so new to a lot of the people who were needing it, that he felt the delivery of it was not fair or that it wasn't that knowledge was passed freely mm -hmm. from the client mm -hmm. to from the provider to the client. So he felt that if he got the chance that he would be able to move key concepts along the chain so that the person who is requesting the support also get the knowledge from that transaction as well. Okay, let me backtrack. So basically people get the support but they didn't get the knowledge right. to do to what? To continue to do it without a, 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 a contractor. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right. Okay. right. So um, moving that knowledge along, that's why we started it in terms of key concepts 
concepts knowledge base mm -hmm. because we felt that people that we provided services for should at the end of the transaction gain that knowledge whether it's in documentation or exchanges so that they feel confident that they were. They now knew something more and then they could leverage that new knowledge to continue their um, missions or goals. Okay. Yes. How many uh, clients do you guys can handle? How many are you handling right now? Uh, currently, um, based on the fact that his uh, experience has been up to about $10 million in portfolio management and program management, we are handling about $1 million in um, contracts. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about, mm, about 10 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, about how many contracts, it might span the spectrum of what types of contracts mm -hmm. in information technology. Um, but you know, we're, we're definitely um, entrenched in our information technology market and trying to understand it and provide robust solutions for our clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, who are the customers? Is that government or uh, individual, um, private? Or? Right. Currently, we have our portfolio where we have federal um, and we have commercial. Mm -hmm. um, we've had in the uh, arena of contract and you have to be a prime or a sub, however you're managing it. So currently we're subbing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in the federal space and commercial space. Okay. Which one is heaviest? Um, right now, commercial mm -hmm. for us. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So you're planning to do more business with the government then? Um, yes, we're all poised and ready to be able to do that, penetrating government and all this time of transition and lots of change mm -hmm. is a little difficult right now. But we do have ourselves available as an AT company. We've certified ourselves. We're on GSA. So government people can decide to have discussions with us because we've been vetted mm -hmm. and we're just ready, willing and able to have those kind of conversations. Okay. Are you the only, co only company? I'm just asking, are you the only company bringing to the businesses the knowledge as well as uh, the services they need or how much competition there, there, there is right. in that area? Well, from our personal experience, we understand that that has, that has had to change. And so now people are not hoarding or blocking. They have to transfer the knowledge. So no, we're not anymore this only company doing it. But we do know because we have that as a value system mm -hmm. um, that we bring it honestly to our transactions. Mm -hmm. And so we look forward to people um, contacting us and um, giving us the opportunity to present our model mm -hmm. and our processes and, and understand what our core competencies are. Okay. How difficult was it to, to bring that to the market? How was the reception? Oh, <laughs> good question. Um, Reception in 2008 mm -hmm. on the lean government discussions or modernization of uh, government. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anytime you're going through transitions and people have the status quo, it is not easy to penetrate that. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a bit difficult. Uh, but we got people on our team who said yes, they give us a shot. And we've been able to prove them correct for giving us that opportunity. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> What is your biggest challenge then in your business? Ah, the biggest challenge right now for us in business as a small company, not only coming up as a small business, but as um, founders, as immigrants, first generation immigrants, is not having, I guess, that history, um, that deep network that you could tap into readily to, and to reinforce or to, to, to leverage their relationships so that you can get the opportunity to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, that has been one of our challenges. Another challenge we seem to face right now and as an external challenge is the fact that I don't think there's enough information for us as a small business to understand what kind of business models we need to have for this kind of century or for the environment we're facing, the dynamics we're facing. Um, so I look forward to being able to align more with business models and organizational stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are the things I wrestle with. Okay. And what is your biggest success, or would you consider your biggest success? Oh, um, the fact that we're still standing 
after God, uh, in, in spite of all those challenges mm -hmm. and in spite of the sequestration and, and all the other dynamics and economics going to part as people used to see it, mm -hmm. we're still here and we've learned a lot and we've gathered a lot of experiences, mm -hmm. uh, nice footprint in um, government, mm -hmm. um, supporting prime contractors, and so we look forward to being able to leverage those past performances into future opportunities. Okay, now I'm going to go into another separate subject. You remember the Black Chamber of Commerce? Oh, yes. Uh, how, what is the relationship with the Chamber, and how do you work with that? How do you leverage the Chamber? Tell us a bit about that. Oh, well, again, um, definitely we're grateful for the fact that we were able to find that kind of network, that kind of uh, camaraderie that we get at the Northern Virginia Black Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the chambers we're part of. Uh, we're also part of the Asian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we look forward to being able to participate in forming programs that really reflect what goes on with entrepreneurs today mm -hmm. and how we can better prepare them for tomorrow. Um, so based on that, we're part of the federal GovCon group. Uh, we participate in their planning. Mm -hmm. uh, we're part of the governance of the chamber. So okay. we actively engage in it. Very good. Now moving on to the next subject, the Expo. We host twice a year the Expo. Yes. And you've been to our expo. Why don't you tell the guests over here your experience at the expo? Oh, okay. At the expo, uh -huh. I did enjoy going in there. Uh -huh. um, I look forward to see more um, products uh -huh. and having more federal or government uh -huh. people present uh -huh. to let the small businesses that are trying to be seen uh -huh be seen by the ones who have the ability or the power to make decisions on procurement or acquisition and stuff. If we could get that, that would be great. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to have that. The next time, for your information, we have to celebrate the 10th anniversary. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> 10 years of trying to make sure small businesses are seen. I appreciate it, Basil. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. That will be on June 20th. We'll be at the Stacey Sherwood Community Center. Okay. Uh, we're definitely planning to have this time in addition of uh, seminars mm -hmm. on uh, teaching people how to do business with the government. Oh, great. Yeah. That's something uh -huh. we want to address and also work probably, it's not finalized yet, we're in the work on getting a cyber seminar. Oh, yes, yes. correct. Because uh -huh. that. Is big. It's big. big. And it affects any business, whatever the size and whatever. It's so true, you know, yes. and that is also one of our portfolios. And we do cyber solutions. Mm -hmm. We're involved in that right mm -hmm. now. And I remember telling somebody in a meeting, according to an FBI report last year, 80% of small businesses are under attack. 80%? 80%, I think, was the FBI report, of small businesses are under attack and don't even know it, and don't even know when their data is being stripped, when personal PII is being stripped, and therefore... PII, yeah, for I guess, what does that mean? Personally identifiable information. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when that is being stripped, you don't, you don't know, but then there are risks as a business if you don't know because now there are laws that say that you're supposed to have certain types of insurance to offset that. So those are the things, what? insurance. What kind of insurance? No. Some business insurance, risk insurance, okay. to manage um, cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. And that is something we're very much interested in because we would like to be able to discuss that more with small businesses because that's something in our portfolio as well. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the fact that every person being under attack. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Somebody's getting into the bank account, somebody's getting their personal file data? Uh, penetration, penetration strip, penetration, roving around in your database. Um, you, you're just leaving things out so people can access it, not only physical but cyber. And then it's just, they're not as, and they know. It's smart because hackers will know to attack a supply chain and you go from the weakest side of it. Why would you go to the big, guys who have everything all fired up, firewall, networks, fabric, everything well, managed. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We have the recent example of Target. Correct. So Target's not small. <laughs> no, it's not. But picture small. But you see. What is small? Small is 250 people or less working in the enterprise, and probably there's a revenue amount for small. Who did with Definition. Target? No, I said they're not small. Yes. But picture if they were small, mm -hmm. the only difference is the hackers have to go to 100 of targets. 
hundred small businesses probably to make up the attack. Oh, okay, okay. But it doesn't mean that they're not doing it to the small businesses. It's just more work no, for no, them. No, no, I got it. <laughs> it's just more work for them, but it's under fire. Um, so I think more of us should be aware of how to protect our systems. But how do you guys offer a service along those lines? Uh, we do have the capacity to do so, and based on that FBI report, we have been defi defining a program or process on offering for small businesses so they can contact us whenever they're ready. That would be fine. So yeah. small business can contact you? Correct. We, we're available at least the, first, the last Friday of every month to have a moment to meet other businesses in the community other than what we do. But we definitely would like people to come in, companies to come in and say whatever uh, market they're in or arena they're in. And we would bring that cross-cutting concern approach to IT. We offer governance and risk management. We offer program management. What is governance? Governance is the ability to look across an enterprise and determine the risks and the strengths of the enterprise and to manage your enterprise to those risks. Mm -hmm. So you might have all manner of risks or all manner of um, operations or functions that you need to manage or have control on. Mm -hmm. Governance does that, but from a real strategic point of view. Gotcha, okay. And uh, what, um you don't have to tell me in details how you're going to go about it. How are you going to go about protecting small business? I don't want you to give all your secret away, but. <laughs> um, well, you have to define um, the, I guess, the boundaries of what is expected from a legal perspective first, I would think, so that you prepare yourself to be able to step and fill the supply chain for some group that you want to be part of. Mm -hmm. So if we could understand at least where the small businesses are, where they would like to go, we'd know what kind of uh, measures, metrics, or guards they need to have for their enterprise in order to be able to face off mm -hmm. safer in mm -hmm. the environment that they're going to be participating in. So it would take a lot of diagnostics and some audits and some gap analyses, but eventually construct something that might be generic or might be very much customized. Mm -hmm. But cyber is real, uh, how, cyber attacks are real. Yeah, I know that's not difficult, but I'm curious to say, how do they figure out 80%? Right, that's an FBI report. I don't know, I, it seems to be exaggerated. Yeah, you think? I mean, I can understand 20, 30, maybe yeah. it is, but I'm just saying, how do you, how, how do, do you, you prove know? that? Or maybe the hackers go to them and tell, by the way, you see the list of number of business, uh -huh. in, I don't know, how, how do they get do that? You, but I'm then curious. There's a lot of ways that things are happening in terms of information passing that was not always privy to the general public. So once you're on a network, doesn't mean that people can't see what's happening on your network. It's just if they tell you what's happening on your network, I mean, I'm just talking about the guy who was no, snooping, uh -huh. the guy who, who said, I'm not going to snoop. Mm -hmm. I don't want to snoop because you realize he's snooping on everything. He's seeing everything. And he's like, why do I have to see everything? Well, you mightn't see that your business is penetration, but somebody has been noticing penetration on your network. Gotcha. Right. But you haven't been seeing that. Maybe I guess told. if there was no transaction done mm -hmm. or uh, no action being mm -hmm. taken, so you may not be aware, and maybe it's even taken, you just don't, didn't notice it. Right. And the people who are providing the service, though, they know how to track. They know how to track penetra penetrations. They know mm -hmm. what looks different, but they can't, they won't tell you all of that all the time. But as a person receiving the service, now you will be able to stand up and say, I need to have firewall, I need to have networks, I need to have better fabric management, I need and I need because the knowledge is now coming on the other side, yeah? So people can now start leveraging or talking, having the discussions, what do I need as a business to keep my business safer, is the conversation small businesses need to start to have. Gotcha. Hmm. That's as interesting as scary. <laughs> yes, it is. I know, and that's why some people don't want to talk about it, but it is there, it happens, and if you mitigate risks, you might not always be able to not have something happen, but you definitely should have a plan for if it happens, this is what you would do, um, and how to better secure data and information, as you say, information. Yeah, very important. And that's what we can assist in. We have that... Um, capability to design solutions for your enterprise. Uh, 
That's, 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 that's a whole subject. Right? Yes. <laughs> that's a whole subject. It is. <laughs> it makes mm -hmm. me feel that we should absolutely have a seminar on definitely. cyber security at the next expo. Yes, definitely. I brought that up in a meeting I was at, and people circumvented it because I guess people don't want to think about the thing that's in the closet, that's actually right here on my laptop or in my network. Mm -hmm. And then they have to address how they do business differently. It's also another thing that they might have to address. So that's where technology can help, you think? That's where technology and information about your business and your networks and your exposures can help you formulate a plan. Yeah, that's the power of information and technology. So you know, so you make better decisions. That's what I think. <laughs> yes. That's a whole, whole <laughs> but, lot of stuff. But don't leave it alone. It's definite. It's necessary to have the conversation. I think, um, yeah, we would like to be part of that as well. That conversation on managing small businesses and cybersecurity. Well, I'll cyber tell you attacks. what you can do. i tell you what you can do right here. Just uh, join our expo. I'll give you details after this. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then you. maybe you can do an expose or be yes. part of. Uh, part of mm -hmm. I'm serious because yeah, yes. because 80 percent. I can think with it now. You're telling me because uh, it is they provide a service. Mm -hmm. The people who provide a service sees mm -hmm. you using it. Yes. But they can also easily see somebody not allowed to use right. it. Like if you have a network, whatever, mm -hmm. they know you are using it. That's fine. It can be seen and tracked. Mm -hmm. But they can also see mm -hmm. somebody is using it. Yes. And that person obviously does not have the authorization. Mm -hmm. to to get in and they probably may not necessarily go after the person no, because that's not necessarily their business person. Right, right. Not at that it's not something that's mandatory for them to do, or it's probably too small. Well they don't. I mean it's it's not really their job. Right. It's and like I build your house, mm -hmm. your real house, and uh, I see it, I'm standing outside. I, mean, I see you going in under us, that's fine. Now, somebody has come and go, I may suspect that the person is mm -hmm. not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. But I but can't I necessarily know. go and grab them and throw them down and say, not right. supposed to be there per se. Mm -hmm. Because not necessarily part of my job. Maybe that's where your job comes in. Yes, we. Then to make uh -huh. sure that you're the Then person. you get author authentications and how to get access and authorization, knowing when things are being stripped, when things are moving off your network, they're not supposed to move, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Um, yeah, that's the power of information and technology, trackability. It's also very much, you know, you lose your ability to be so um, clandestine or, or, or quiet. You start to not have to look at everything. That's one of the problems of the technology, <laughs> really, because yes. as much as it's helpful and as it is just as helpful as are difficult to quote unquote track. Yeah. To the, the, the way it keeps changing and how fast it's moving could make anybody feel like, oh, I've had enough of technology for a bit. Um, so my I thought is- I don't know that we have a choice because once you're in it, uh, you gotta you swim. Can't get, it's like a train. <laughs> you can't get off. <laughs> no, you can't well, get off. Well, that one has not even a final destination. That's even no. a bigger problem. Yes, it is. And I also wanna you know, make you know, one of our key uh, core values is the fact that we all understand information and technology but for us we really like to make sure our employees our people on our team are comfortable i don't drive our people we do look for um wellness you know people in technology usually are very very stressed because of the type the nature of the industry mm -hmm. and i guess we try to make sure that they have their benefits and they have certain um, allocations to them so they get that rest mm -hmm. they get that chance to recharge and come back it's something we believe in we're not running machines in the company <laughs> we're just using machines to support human beings and whatever human beings want to achieve mm -hmm. yeah That's key concepts. If we sure. get back to the quote from Bill Gates business uh -huh. and technology <laughs> are together <laughs> yes uh-huh they are and and it's just across every arena every industry now has information uh, information technology embedded and then the next step is accessing that information via technologies to do something it can't just be static it has to convert into something and that's that's the power for us um, of gathering information and using technology that's how you convert it into something meaningful 
So we look forward to participating in that R and D. Wow, that's uh, that's quite something. That's definitely something because we all. I mean, you cannot live today's technologies like. I mean, if with the phone or the internet goes down. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody goes mad in the house. <laughs> <laughs> everybody needs a moment. They can't. They like they can't breathe without it. Can, it. Uh -huh. the, the electricity goes down, and I mean everybody's. Mm -hmm. in. Then you realize how much connected mm -hmm. you are with technology. Yes, it is. It is very pervasive. Um, but I again, I definitely look forward to the moments where you can um, unplug because I believe people generate ideas in quiet and not necessarily noise and storm. Mm -hmm. So we do allow for that even in our discussions when we're running our discussions and mm -hmm. ideas, we give those moments for our people to take a break and come back and mm -hmm. let us brainstorm some more. Quiet is necessary too. No, I don't, I don't understand that, but I'm just saying, if, if, do you have a power outage in your house? I know. You, would you know. realize, you go to the computer three times, because it's mm -hmm. so high, so you have that habit to go into there. Yeah, I know. But nothing is happening, and you can't do anything. You can't find an address. You can't find this. You, can't, you realize that. <laughs> you can't remember the phone number you were supposed to call the, just the other day. You can, <laughs> leave, can do it. You want, when when I'm leaving to the airport, you don't know because trying to go. It, yes, I know. It's so much related to mm -hmm. this. So it's a story of one of those situations we have to solve the problem mm -hmm. because it's not like you cannot get off, the, off that train. No, you cannot. And I don't know. You have to permeate it, permutate it. You have to move it along. It changes, mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to adapt and, and pivot and, and keep rolling with, with what, what it gives you, the output that technology gives you. Got you. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank Again, you. to the guests I want to say we have our expo on June 20, uh, right here at the uh, Stacy Community Center. We'd love to have you there. That will be from 8 to 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Definitely, Kim, she doesn't know it, but she will be exhibiting. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, and see you next time. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com.